Hello, everybody, Zoom friends. Pozdravljeni vsi skupaj. And welcome to YouTube. My name is Dami. This is my son. My name is Dami. And I represent the Slovenian Association of the Deaf. And I'm responsible for the global cultural events. We have deaf interpreters from 18 countries. Very impressive. We've been going for the past eight months. And we've had 24 speakers so far. Last Wednesday, we had a man called Tony Clues from Australia. We gave a beautiful presentation about Sydney. And congratulations again. Thank you, Tony. Now, our guest tonight is Miha Zupan, Miha Zupan from Slovenia. Slovenia. Welcome, the floor is yours, Miha. Dobrodošli, Miha, izvoli. Welcome to our Zoom event. Thank you, Dami, for inviting me. Very happy to be here to tell my life story. I've been looking forward to this very much. You have a beautiful story to tell. Welcome here. And the floor is yours. And the deaf interpreters, you can open your videos, your cameras now. Okay, it looks like all deaf interpreters are ready. Then, Mika, go ahead. Thank you, Dami. My name, again, is Mika. Mika Zupan. This is my sign name. I was born deaf. Been deaf all my life, culturally deaf. And the love of my life has been basketball. I love sports, I love basketball, and I've traveled a lot thanks to being a member of the basketball team. And I just want to share my story. of me being a, the only deaf player in the hearing basketball team. Tough. I started playing when I was young. I started playing in the, in the deaf school team. It was a professional. It was an amateur team, but I love my sports. And one of my teachers in school my gym teacher thought it would be possible for a deaf player to join a hearing basketball team. So I did. Played many matches, was very happy. Uh, then there was another guy, my deaf coach, 
who saw me play. And he thought I could play in the hearing team. I could play in the hearing competition. And initially I didn't believe him. Because you know, as the only deaf person, um, the hearing people believed that I couldn't play because I was deaf. How would I communicate with my coach? How would I commu communicate with my fellow players? So I wasn't really motivated initially. I was a little nervous and I thought it wouldn't be impossible for me to play in a hearing professional team. I left school and played in the deaf team in the fourth league competition. And we played in the hearing competition, of course, but all our team were, all our team players were deaf. We got some attention. People were really impressed by our play. And I want to show you a picture now of a man. I'm very grateful to the guy I just showed you. He was uh, our deaf coach, very experienced in basketball. And he was the one encouraging me to play in the hearing competition. He wrote letters, he advocated for me. He wrote to the Slovenian Basketball um, Federation and I was lucky. At that time, I was only 17 years old, so still a kid. And my coach approached the, uh, the president of the Slovenian Basketball Federation. They were good friends. And he asked for permission for me, Mika, to... Um, to compete in the East and West Slovenian Blessed Player Competition. It's called the SLL, the ST, the All Stars. <laughs> it was a competition, a one off match, in which they selected the best youth player. So my coach asked me to be allowed to be in that competition. And the president of the Bas of the basketball coach asked yeah but how how will me me have communicate and my and my coach told him just watch him play a game so the president of the basketball federation gave him permission gave me permission to play once coach came up to me and said i've had a talk with the president of the Basketball Federation. You have permission, you'll play in the all-star competition. Came as a shock to me, but I'm very competitive, so I wanted to be the best. So I asked him when it was. It was in two months. So I spent two months training. I wanted to really show what I could because this, this was a one-off opportunity. Really the only opportunity I had to show my abilities. So I joined a hearing club in their training, not in their competition. And now here I am, 17 years old. I'm, I was in the West Slovenian All-Star team. All the rest of the people and the audience were hearing. And I was sitting there, wondering how to communicate. I introduced myself to the coach. I said, my name is Miha. I introduced myself to the other players. And then match time came. I was sitting on the side and my coach, he winked at me and said, okay, this is your chance. And I started playing 
And I felt so good, so motivated. I really wanted to show what I could. And I was selected the MVP, the best player of the match. So I got this cup and I got this uh, cup. I was selected the, 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 player of the, the player of the match. And here I stood as a deaf guy, of course, very happy. This was really good. And then I was approached by another coach. A coach responsible for selecting the Slovenian youth team, the under 18 team. He was the recruiter for the Slovenian under 18 team. He saw my, he saw my match, he saw my play. And he selected me. He came up to me and he said, you have to, you're selected for the national Slovenian youth team. And I was so shocked. I didn't, uh, I, didn't I couldn't believe it at first. But of course, I was very happy. The coach told me, you have to talk to your family and you have to start uh, training on a daily basis. So I became an, uh, a member of the national youth team. And the big change was that I had to practice a lot more. Uh, in the deaf team, we practiced maybe two days a week. This was totally different. Three hours in the morning, three hours of training at night. <laughs> and I felt my body change because I was tired from the training. I, it was very different, a lot heavier, but I was happy. I persisted. And remember the deaf club I told you about, and now the Slovenian deaf youth, uh, the Slovenian youth team. I, I joined a team called Slovan, the second best team from Slovenia, from Ljubljana. And they had the best, they selected the best youth players. And I'm gonna show you a, a picture now of that youth team I was a member of. You saw me? Way back when, 20 years ago, <laughs> very young. And you saw the angry look on the face of my coach. <laughs> His name was Ivan. Sunstra, from Croatia originally. So the country just south of Slovenia. He saw my play and of course I was very nervous. This was, uh, I, I went from the fourth league now to compete in the national team in the first division, the top division, professional basketball players. The coach came up to me and said, you're going to play in the first team. And I said, how, how am I going to do that? I'm deaf. And the coach, uh, and I'll briefly summarize what he told me then. Uh, he'd been, he had a deaf schoolmate from Croatia. And he saw for four years how that classmate was suffering, was isolated, a little depressed, a little oppressed, who, how, his classmate couldn't understand the teacher's uh, speech. And the coach realized that the only problem this guy, his classmate had was communication. And now he met me, the second deaf person in his life. And he remembered his classmate from 30 years earlier. He remembered his problem. So when he met me, this coach said, 
I've been a little stupid to not have helped my classmates. I could have done it, but I missed my opportunity. And I want you to show what deaf people can do. So he truly believed in me, but he said there's one demand you have to train really hard. You must be open to learning. You must listen to me as your coach. And this coach, I really communicate well with. He tried to gesture. Uh, we built up our communication. And of course, as a deaf player, it wouldn't be easy for me to communicate with the team. And the coach actually asked me this. How do you want to communicate? And I said, well, it has to be visual. I, I can't communicate in, communicate in spoken language. But everything has to be visible. And I have to pay visual attention. It's going to be tiring. So during the trainings, I have to watch my coach. I have to watch my team players, my teammates. So my coach told my teammates, that everything has to be visual. And then he taught them a number of gestures. So during the training, we would agree on some symbols, some gestures, some hands movements. And that way we, my teammates could communicate with me and we could communicate with each other. And we were doing pretty well as a team. Uh, unfortunately, I have only one hour's time tonight. So I can only uh, mention a few highlights. Remember the, uh, the team I played for, Slovan. I played there for seven years in the first league. Sometimes we did quite well, sometimes less good. That's top sports. And I knew that the European, in the European leagues, the UK, England, Russia had the strongest teams. And I really wanted to be part of that league. And let me pull up the next slide. I'll show you which one I want to be a part of. Uh -huh. It was the Euro leagues best team, the best team in Europe. So you had Greece, you had actually two good teams and Russia also had three of their best teams. And I wanted to play for my club, the club that I was with for seven years. I wanted to join the best European team in Slovenia. So that one could join the European League. That was my goal. I was chosen and I was so happy. And that motivated me even more. I was able to take my second leap into professional basketball. I was also very emotional. I couldn't believe it. I made it into such a high level team. At Siena, actually, I went to Siena in Italy and I had a match versus another team, but I, that moment, I was so happy to my deaf coach who gave me the first opportunity to my first hearing coach who also supported me. I really thanked them that I was able to get to this new level. So during that match in Siena, it wasn't one of my best moments. But there was a federational team, a Slovenian federation team. So you have first I went to, to club and then I went to regular youth club division. And then I was 
able to work to play for the best Slovenian team. And then once I had reached that level, I wanted to play for Slovenia. I'll show a photo of this. Is everything all right? With the deaf interpreters, great. I'll continue. So in this photo, you see me doing the I love you sign. So when I worked, when I played for the Slovenian team, I was usually in a group of 35 players and then they had slowly made a selection and I made it to the last 14. Oh, sorry, there were 14 selected and unfortunately I was not selected. There was two left, me and another gentleman and I had to wait another year and I tried out again for the Slovenian team and then I was chosen to be part, and this happened in 2010. Of, and I was able to go to the world champions and that was in Turkey. The world's best basketball players were there and it was the first time that I had experienced such a milestone. I was the only deaf person amongst all these professional basketball players. I didn't care if we lost or if we won. I was just happy that I had the experience. I was able to play at such a high level. Played many matches, played against South Korea, I remember. And the South Korean uh, looked at me and saw that I had hearing aids on and tried to, uh, he, it was a journalist from Korea, I found out later on and he wanted to interview me and I asked a Slovenian person, uh, I just grabbed the person next to me and he interpreted for me. And the South Korean journalist was just so amazed at my story. And I realized that I need to publicize that deaf people can be professional basketball players. So in Turkey, uh, we had a match and we made it to the last round, the, last, the best eight. Uh, the Americans were first and second and then Slovenia was eighth. We won eighth place, and, but that was fine with me. It was one of the best memories I've ever had. And so I wanna share with you, how did that work being the only deaf player with all hearing players. So I actually spoke with a psychologist and the psychologist noticed that even if there's gonna be any communication issues, you need to have some support. So the psychologist, our team psychologist actually uh, called a professional to come and actually see how the communication was between the deaf, uh, this deaf player and all these hearing players. At first, he thought of something uh, rhythmic or musical. And he's like, no, I cannot hear anything. Uh, so the psychologist had really no great ideas on how to help me and support me in communicating as the only deaf person amongst the whole hearing team. Uh, so his best tip to me was to say, if you have any communication issues, you need to be assertive, you need to be brave, and you need to go to your coach and tell them that you're having a communication problem. You need to go to your players and tell them that you're having a communication issue. You need to be the one to let them know and to be assertive. And that was actually really difficult for me. 
I played first uh, in seven years, I played in six different countries. I played in Slovenia, and then I played in Greece uh, for one year. And then from there, I moved on uh, and played for one month in Italy. And then from there, I moved on to playing uh, in Russia uh, from St. Petersburg for two years. And then I moved on to a team in, uh, playing in Turkey for three years in Ankara, the big, the capital in uh, Turkey. And then after Ankara, I uh, went to another smaller city that was called Usap. I, I don't remember the sign name exactly. And from there, I moved on to playing in Romania. It was called Ordena. And then from there, I went uh, back to Turkey again. And so I changed teams many times, teams and countries and cultures. Because the basketball season, uh, out of those 10 months, you then move on to the next place for 10 months. However, I would only play for two months and I would have to try and communicate all over again and set up communication methods and try and find my footing um, after two months. And so it always took me about two months out of the 10 month period to find my footing to, and how to communicate with my team. To where many of the teams changed from being very verbal to very visual. And so even if you played defense, so I said, what's the sign for defense? And I would show them defense and they would, okay, this is the sign. Okay, if we want to do this strategy, they would use their signs to me and it worked out great. And I was very lucky because the coaches and the players uh, really worked together with me. I really never had a problem in all the different countries and teams that I were able to join. Of course, I've had some negative experiences, but so many positive experiences. I was very lucky. But one experience I want to share in particular was in Turkey. There was a coach who was only talking and I was not able to understand him whatsoever. However, he would write a lot on a board and I could read that really quickly. One time the stands were full and he was yelling all of his plays and I couldn't hear it anyways, but I was looking at what was happening visually. And so I saw that during this play, there were five players. Uh, there was Americans, Turkish, and I, and they all didn't understand each other. So I told them the plays, but I was signing. And they're like, how did you know all the plays? And I'm like, it's visual. I could see what he wanted. So he was trying to communicate his plays, but the players all being different uh, nationalities and it was really loud. They couldn't hear the plays, but I was able to see what he wanted. And they're like, how do you understand? So I was able to show them that being, you know, having my visual attention on the whole situation actually helped. And they saw that it was actually an advantage that it was deaf, that I was able to follow the plays. And then the other players came to me and said, thanks to Miha, I was able to understand because you were hearing and you were shouting out the plays, but it was so noisy in the stands, I couldn't understand a thing. So thanks to Miha, he interpreted the plays for us. That was a really great memory. So when I worked for the Slovenian team, that photo that I, when I played for the Slovenian team, uh, that was uh, a moment that I was, yeah, world renowned. In 2010, I told you that I went to the world championships in Turkey. Four years later, I went to the world championships in 2014, and that was in Spain, in Barcelona. So I traveled to Barcelona and I was really happy to be selected again to play for the World Cup. 
for the world championships. However, I wasn't, I played uh, on the world league, but I had never played in the European championships. Uh, the European Championships uh, League is an extremely high level league. And I was also getting older and it was my last chance to be able to be selected. And I was selected for the European team and I was so thankful. And uh, that was in Croatia. And uh, the matches took place in France. Uh, we didn't uh, make it to the semifinals. However, my coach always said, the minute I was taken on with the youth, his name is Memi Becirovic, I'll never forget, thanks to him that he believed in me. And that first step that I was able to join the youth team and then I joined several clubs after that. And when I was able to play in the A-Leagues, I remembered um, that very first coach. If I was never selected that first time, I would have never had the future opportunities that I had been given. And luckily I've been able to be a professional player for 19 years. The most important thing that I've done is trained every single day. Five days of training, then the match day, and then on Sunday, on the seventh day was my one free day. And then the week would start all over again. And week in, week out. <laughs> Only in June, July, and August, so during the summer holidays, even then, I didn't take time off. I wanted to become a better player. And I found an individual, a personal trainer. I told him I wanted to <clears throat> improve myself. I remember the first time I played out of Slovenia it was for a Greek, Greek team. And the trainings there were very hard. But there I had one spinal problem i got a spinal injury and the greek daughter or the greek doctor told me that i had to take two months off because my spinal injury and he told me i was overtrained um he realized how motivated i was so, but i had to take a step back and just take care of my own body and train very carefully and of course, um, I got older and after 19 years of training, I realized how important my physical health is. And also that without training, I would not be able to further improve my play. I think that's more or less my story uh, regarding my basketball career. I want to move on to my show career i i had never danced in my life i'd never been taught how to dance but at some point i got elected <laughs> uh, in slovenia from all the uh, sports teams it was a tv show who approached many players from the soccer team, the basketball team, other teams, if anybody was interested in competing in this national dance competition. Everybody said no. They asked me and asked me if I was interested to have a discussion with them, a conversation about them, or with them about joining a dance competition. So we had this conversation and they asked me, can you dance? And I said, no, I have no clue. Would you like to be involved? And somehow I did. <laughs> so after all this training I've done, 
as a basketball player, why not take on this new challenge? This will be my second uh, big challenge in life. Not having danced at all, ever, I wanted to show what deaf people can do. So that was my motivation. I told them, okay. They told me, wow. So I practiced dancing by myself for two weeks. And um, and this time, I there was the six uh, hearing dancers, six men, six women, and then the six famous people who needed to compete. Um, I had a sign language interpreter. Um, I met these two dancers who danced with me and they told me I was good. And I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> the second woman said, yeah, you can develop your dance skills. I didn't believe them, but this was positive feedback. So I was happy with that. And out of the two women, I selected my dance partner, Maya. She has a sign name like this. Because she's very uh, sweet, uh, very non-aggressive. So I gave her this sign name. So my dance partner, Maya, was a very skilled dancer. She actually worked as a dance instructor and had been traveling a lot, teaching people how to dance, but I was her first deaf pupil. <laughs> we agreed to practice for two weeks and I said, well, I'm a visual guy. You have to communicate with me visually. Speech won't work. So she then would demonstrate her moves. I would watch her, memorize it. And this woman told me I had to train for six to eight hours every day. So I said, okay. She said, really, are you willing to do that? I said, sure. I've been a professional basketball player. I'm used to training. I can train for dance. So I started training for six to eight hours, six days a week. And again, the seventh day, I would have to go on TV live. Same rhythm, six days of training, eight hours a day, and on day seven, the TV show again. Uh, and the jury just let me pass to the next round. So I stayed on the show for three months. So remember, there were six male dancers, a team of six female dancers and six famous people. And at the end, Uh, the show went on for 12 weeks without a break. And I thought I could maybe last four weeks. And that after four, the fourth week, I'd be kicked out by the jury. And I wouldn't have minded because I thought TV is the best reclama, <laughs> the best way of showing what deaf people can do, that people can work, that people can be successful. And for me, I would have been happy with lasting four weeks in this show. And I was approached by many deaf friends, deaf families, who th or family, hearing family members of deaf people who approached me and said, I always thought the deafness was um, 
meant you had a, an intellectual problem or a mental problem. And they told me that I really demonstrated to them that it was just a matter of communication. Well, and that's the message I wanted to bring across on TV. So I asked the TV station, give me more opportunities outside of this dance competition, please, to demonstrate what deaf people can do. So they gave me a two, three minutes. Oh, I made a proposal that I would come up with a two or three minutes message to the hearing community to talk about and to demonstrate what deaf people can do. The deaf people can. All right. I think I see. Okay. I have the deaf interpreters swapped roles. Okay, you can continue, Mia. So the problem of deafness is really the connection between the deaf world and the hearing world. And I want to be a bridge between the deaf and the hearing world and the deaf and hearing communities. And this is something you need to fight for continuously, be it on Instagram, be it on Facebook, be it on TV. And in Slovenia, I think, thanks to that TV exposure, um, the deaf community and the hearing community have come closer to each other. What I want to show you now is a two, three minute video. You see me dancing very awkwardly in the beginning and you see me improve. <laughs> so during that, as I said, this uh, TV series lasted 12 weeks and I stayed on. They didn't kick me out for 11 episodes I made it to the finals. And during the 12 weeks, I could honestly say I trained for six to eight hours a day. And compared to dance training, I can tell you the basketball training was a piece of cake. Dance training was a lot, a lot harder. Because the basketball training is back and forth, two teams, you score a goal and you're done. When you're dancing, you have to think about every muscle in your body. You have to think about your facial expressions, every muscle in your body. And you can't show the, the effort it takes you to dance. You can't show, you're not allowed to show that on your face, <laughs> right? So from these dance trainings, I was physically tired. I was tired from the communication efforts. I was mentally tired. And I'm very grateful to my dance partner, to Maya, for her support. She really tried to communicate with me. She really believed in me. I'm very grateful for that. And she made an effort to communicate. And this beautiful woman, dancer. I'm still in touch with her very intensely. Let me show you the video.
I just wanted to show you a little snapshot of uh, the 50 hours of practicing I did. And, uh, but as you saw, once it was aired on television, I also chose a deaf interpreter and I lobbied to make sure that there was a deaf interpreter interpreting for the show. At first, uh, they rejected the idea and they said they didn't want the interpreter on live, but they put her on a additional channel. This deaf interpreter actually lobbied further And when it was time to have an interpreter for the judges, I also had a deaf interpreter. Because I wasn't able to see what the judges were saying, of course, I wasn't able to understand their spoken language, but we had two interpreters that were feeding the deaf interpreters. And this is the first time that this was shown on television. And that was also a great opportunity to show on Slovenian uh, television how we used uh, deaf interpreters working together with hearing interpreters. So I was really happy to be able to support the use of deaf interpreters. And again, showing that deaf people can do everything. My experience dancing was really a, a beautiful experience. To be honest, I always thought, ugh, dancing, that's for hearing people. And because most, I'm 205 centimeters and most dancers are about 175 centimeters, but uh, after weeks and weeks, and my dance partner was much smaller than I, but Again, I tell people deaf people can dance, deaf people can really do everything. And because of that experience, people have seen, oh yeah, it's true. I have seen it on television. So I think it's really important and thanks to the publicity that I've gotten on television that I've been able to be a role model to other people to see what deaf people can do. So deaf people can be involved in anything, but we need to make sure we get more publicity and get on television or in the public's view. And that's my goal to work on making sure that deaf professionals are put in this limelight and also that the public can see what's possible. I've had an hour to share my story. Thank you for listening. I give the floor back to Dami. And you're not just a deaf Slovenian, you're a member of the global deaf community. So thank you so much for your story. You're so successful as a basketball player, as a dancer. I want to open the floor for questions. Throughout your uh, basketball careers, you've always worn a shirt with number 12. Why was that? When I was watching basketball growing up, there was one player, Marco Milic. And I was always amazed. Um, because he was also a race car driver. He was an idol to me and he wore the number 12. So that's why I chose the number 12 because of him. Can you do the questions and I do the response?
my coach told me, you, there's no pain during a match. There's no breaks during a match. If you have a problem, you just keep on playing. And so I remember that. So once my hearing aid indeed fell off, but I had to, I remembered what the coach told me. Would I be able to stop the whole game and pick it up and put it back in? Uh, no, I'm not allowed. So I just grabbed it and threw it to my assistant coach. But he was shocked and he ran to me that I was not able to hear anything. But then they did call a timeout uh, and they gave me my hearing aid. But I was like, I'm sorry, you told me that the game was most important. So that's why I just took my hearing aid and threw it. With a hearing aid, I don't hear 100%, um, especially within long distance. So I can't hear a whistle, for example. I can hear sounds. If someone yells, I can orientate to where the sound is. So that's where I wear hearing aids, but I don't use it to follow communication or sp spoken language. I just know that someone is trying to get my attention. So that's why I wear a hearing aid. There are so many times that uh, you fell during a game and uh, how did you deal with that? Yes, as you know, deaf people have balance issues. So there are many times that I would jump and if there is just one little hit, I would fall really easily. And when you are, when you fall, you need to make sure you don't strain your ankles or hurt yourself. So I knew that I had to roll. And I knew I had this balance issue. Again, I also share this with my coach and with the players and uh, I had to tell them if I didn't say anything, they would think there was something wrong with me. And now that they knew, oh, it's because he's deaf and he has poor balance. And so then they accepted it. So you have two plays of 10 and then you would have a break and then you would see your coach yelling how did you deal with that? Yeah, there's advantages and uh, disadvantages to being a deaf player. Indeed, during the breaks, you have the team that goes into their own private rooms. And sometimes you do have coaches that really tell you off, uh, just really put you down and swear at you. And the players get even more motivated or they get frustrated. But sometimes, but I didn't understand what he was saying. And so the other players would get all aggravated and really pumped up by these talk. But there's times that I would ask one or two players to share what did he say. And so they would summarize what the coach was yelling. So thanks to those players, if those players didn't take that on, I would have been really out of the loop. So I'm really thankful to those players that gave me a short summary of what the coach said. You said during your seven years, you joined different teams for maybe a year or two. What did you have to, who supported you during those seven years in all those different teams? Was it the managers or who did you, who did you get most of your support from? Well, to be honest, I was work. I was playing in Slovenia and I really wanted to get out. And I'm really thankful to this one gentleman, uh, Boris. He was a previous manager, but before he was a manager, he was a player. Uh -huh. uh, so he was one of my previous uh, player that I used to play with. And he knew that I had to get out of Slovenia. At, play in Greece or any other country just to get a change, change of scenery. And 
get a more international experience. So thanks to that manager. So I first he called different clubs, different teams. And uh, luckily this manager had a lot of contacts and there was one club that was interested. Uh huh. But uh, he never said that I was deaf. He just says, there's this player, his name is Miha. If he would have said that I was deaf, maybe he would have said no. So the manager decided to just talk about me as a player. And once I showed up, he was actually really shocked that I was deaf. Uh -huh. Happened in grief. But luckily he accepted it and, uh, and then it worked out. And as you all know, uh, yeah. And then once after that, they, uh, most teams knew that I was deaf. And once again, thanks to that manager, otherwise I think I would have been stuck in Slovenia. Uh -huh. um, you know this famous Yugoslavian, uh, actually Croatian uh, basketball trainer who is famous for cursing and did you meet similar coaches outside of uh, former Yugoslavia? There was one coach, uh, oh, in the Balkans, uh, in Greece, in Turkey, in oh. Serbia, in Croatia, in that area, the coaches are quite intense. It, oh. um, they're not really easy to work with. And there were times uh, where they got really aggressive. Uh -huh. the always tell me if they would just be really sweet and nice, we would lose the match. They had to pump us up. They had to get us going. They, they use that type of intense, aggressive energy to make sure that we win. And then I actually went to, I saw a coach from Israel, but he was really different. He was really calm. And actually I was shocked. I wasn't used that type of a coach because for seven years I was in, Slo in Slovenia. And then after that in other countries that were all very aggressive type coaches. And this one Israeli coach was so different. It was really interesting. So I've had different experiences with different coaches. Uh huh. So time for a deaf interpreter to switch. All right, all deaf interpreters ready? Great. So you've played for seven different clubs in different countries. Did you bring your family to all those different countries? Yes, my family always came with me for the very first time uh, for the very, when I first go to a place, I go for the first month alone. I arrange uh, schooling and housing. And then, uh, yes, my family has uh, been with me for eight years uh, in different countries. Mm -hmm. and it wasn't an issue. I have two children uh, that are bilingual. They speak many different languages. Uh, they're multilingual, but the most, the language that they speak the most is English. But it's really amazing they speak English fluently. And that's because we've always been in international, they've been in international schools. Uh -huh. It would have been difficult if I wouldn't be able to see my wife and family. So the, I, they definitely, it was important for me that they traveled with me or that we lived together. Uh huh. So you brought your family with you uh, for matches, clubs. Did you, meet, did you meet the local deaf community? Did you become involved in local deaf communities? I've been to so many countries now, and it's really it's really amazing. Yeah, all the, all these deaf people know me. I even went to Israel, and I was sitting down, and I saw some deaf people signing to each other. And one of the players looked and said, uh -huh. "And I'll, I'm like, I'll tell you later." <laughs> There was no phones at that time. And one of the player was like, are you communicating with them? I'm like, you understand? And I'm like, yeah, he's Israeli. And so I was sitting next to the players 
uh, on the bench and the deaf people were in the stands and the players next to me were like, but how do you understand each other? You're Slovenian, they're from Israel. They're like, it's impossible. We're like, yeah, sign language is universal. I mean, of course we all have our different sign languages, but then I was able to explain to him that we're able to uh, understand each other worldwide. And one interesting story that happened in Romania, there was some uh, deaf people that I met. I came to Romania and there were some players uh, that said, I have some deaf friends. I have some deaf friends. Come and meet them. And this was a great story. So this player uh, spoke Romanian and also spoke English. Uh, he's like, I'll interpret for you. And I'm like, no, no, it's okay. They're deaf. I can just talk with them directly. I can just sign with them directly. He's like, yeah, but they're Romanian. He's like, okay, I got to see this. So I met his deaf friends and uh, no miscommunications whatsoever. And this hearing player was just shocked and then he asked his Romanian friends, do you understand them? Miha, do you understand them? No problem. And he was just fascinated. And actually this player was quite disappointed. He wanted to be the interpreter. He thought, oh, I'm going to provide this awesome service. I'm like, no, no, don't be disappointed. And a month later, uh, he asked me to come with him. I'm like, is there an issue? And he wanted to talk with me. And he's like, hmm. deaf people can communicate with everyone. And deaf people really, all deaf people can are intelligent. They can just communicate and there's no issues. I'm like, yeah. He's like, I have a deaf friend in Romania. And he thought that his deaf, this deaf person, uh, wasn't able to learn, was developmentally disabled, um, and he felt so bad, and he finally realized he's not not intelligent because he can't speak, he just has a different language, sign language. And then he also noticed that this friend of his, uh, he doesn't speak anymore, and he only signs, but luckily, because I was able to share that with this uh, Romanian player, he changed the way he talked with his friend uh -huh. and started signing with him. And now they have great communication. So you've communicated, uh, you've traveled all over the world. Uh, were you ever bored or isolated and felt you couldn't communicate with the people surrounding you? Honestly, many times I'm alone because uh, it, it, two deaf people together, or deaf people together, we can talk for hours. But hearing people, when they come together, they talk for about an hour and then they're talked out. And then it's just kind of boring. <laughs> so thanks to the telephone, I would be signing with my friends. And many hearing people look at me and say, my goodness, you're like talking so long. And does it hurt? Is it tiring? They're like, if I was in your shoes, I wouldn't be able to sign for so long. But then I had to explain to them, no, we're used to it. We sign for hours together. So I noticed that there is a different way on how we communicate. But for me, it's the best uh, when I can communicate one-on-one. -on -one. When there's many hearing people, uh, yeah, then I'm out of the loop. In Turkey, however, uh, I had so many deaf friends there that I was never bored. Uh, and in Russia as well, and in Romania. I've traveled to so many countries now that once I come to a country, I find the deaf community and then I uh, go to work, if you will. So thanks to all of you who know me from Russia, from Romania, from Turkey, from Greece, thank you all uh, for giving me your time. Wow. So you played for a very big club in Russia. And you've traveled in a Russian competition. You've seen all of Russia, right? That huge continent almost. Is that right? Yeah, bringing my family to Russia. Uh, I thought I would see my family uh, plenty, but flying just from St. Petersburg to Moscow uh, there's actually
that's actually one area is close to China and the travel from one area to, from one side of Russia to the next is 12 hours. And so actually we were flying all the time. So even though it was my home country, I was still constantly flying and I had to leave for three or four days. And then when I came back, I was only home for one or two days. So even though I had my family with me in Russia, Russia is so large that I actually didn't see my family much. In Turkey, everything was much closer and all the matches were much closer. So I was able to see my family much, much more. Uh -huh. So far for the basketball career, let's move on to your dance career. When you get up on the dance floor, did you feel nervous? Uh, how do you feel inside with oh, such a big TV audience watching you? To be honest, the first time I thought, I'm not going to be nervous. If I make mistakes, no worries. I just want to show what I am able to do. That's what I thought. So I trained and I trained. And the first time I got on stage, uh, 30 minutes before I started to get warm <laughs> and I actually got a little bit dizzy and I got worried, am I going to be able to do this or not? Uh, so just so before that, I wasn't worried, but the last 30 minutes before I got on stage, but Maya told me, you have to believe in you and you have to believe it in your heart and believe in me and believe in us. And Maya um, also, she interpreted the music to me, if you will. So she would listen to the music and she would actually squeeze in my hand so she would, and give me visual cues. So she would actually translate the music, if you will. So one example is she would move her shoulder like this. We set up a communication code, uh, also a smile or a grimace. So she did all, we created all these visual cues for her to be able to, like I said, interpret the uh, music to me. And we did that for three or four times. And after it just became a natural process between the two of us. I, I've seen you in the first episode of that dance competition. And there was this jury of five people. And this one guy came out of the jury. Uh, remember the question he asked you then? Yeah, there were four jury members and one of them, yeah, he was, um, he's famous in the dance world. And he was very open. Uh, and he's also someone who is very direct. And he's like, you need to practice and you need to do this. And, but he was so shocked that a deaf person was able to dance. And so he wanted to thank me. He was shocked that I was and extremely tall and deaf and I could still be a good dancer. But I told him it's, it's all in the training, 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 training. Uh-huh. So you were, uh, you started with 12 candidates. People got uh, voted out one after the other. And how do you feel about the support you got? Yeah, there are 12 candidates. And there are also one or two uh, famous women uh, that actually were crying. Uh, and they said because it was so moving, because of the way we danced together with the music, and they were just so impressed. So they also were, supported me. But uh, at the semifinals, there are actually three of us, and the third one was really upset uh, when they lost. I think that this person uh, thought she was going to win the championships, but. but I, I, she just wanted to be first. She didn't do it for the love of dancing. Like I said, I was fine with being eliminated after eight weeks, but this one couple was really, really, uh, un, yeah, really not happy about it. So when I made it to the semifinals, uh, that was quite an issue. Uh, but so that was one maybe negative feeling, but for the rest, it was uh, quite positive. Wow. I've seen you survive this competition. You made it to the semifinals. And were you shocked when 
the jury told you you made it to the finals? The Greek coach, uh, really thanks to her, she's the one that helped with the communication aspect. I mean, there was one journalist that said, who was your, uh, yeah, what's, what's, who's your inspiration? And I said, thanks to this one Greek coach, uh, my wife actually surprised me and contacted my Greek coach and brought the Greek coach all the way to the semifinals, but it was a secret and I was dancing and I said, you know, your Greek coach, remember this person, uh, she's here. And they're like, no, that's impossible. Uh, she's all the way in Greece. So that was uh, one of the biggest um, surprises that I got. And I really owe my basketball career to that coach. So it was a amazing. What amazing. a beautiful story. Thank you so much for sharing your life story. We have viewers now from all over the world. And as you know, all over the world, there are deaf people that feel oppressed, lack confidence. And I'm so grateful for you telling your stories. Do you think deaf people should be more assertive and be more proud of who they are? Yeah, like I said, thanks to the psychologist who gave me that tip to say, be assertive, just go to people, tell them what you need. Tell them if something doesn't work out. Tell them if you can't communicate. And number one is communication. Make sure you can communicate with whatever you, with whoever you're trying to, and whatever you're trying to succeed in. That's the most important. Thank you so much, Miha. Thank you, and thank you to all the interpreters. This is so amazing to. Uh, see this all. Thank you for interpreting my life story. I think that's really important to get it out there. So thank you all. I want to also thank all the deaf interpreters. Hope to work with you many more times in the future. You're off now, uh, Miha. You may turn off your camera if you wish. But again, thank you and congratulations. Now, what a beautiful life story that was. We've been going on for the past seven months. <coughs> We've had several presenters. And I want to ask them to introduce themselves. Our tech guy, can you please spotlight the presenters one by one. Thank you, Hickam, Selman. Unfortunately, because of family issues, you're unable to join us tonight, but thank you so much, Hickam. And Katarina from Russia, you may turn on your camera. Hi, thank you for having me as a presenter. Our third presenter was Dawn Janie Burley from H3. Dawn Janie? Yes. Turn on your camera if you want. Hello, happy to see you. Thank you, Don. Our next presenter, Reza. Can you open your camera, please? Maybe Reza's not here. Let's move to the next.
you may open your camera, Lath. Yes, we can see you. I watched your uh, show tonight. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm traveling, but I really enjoyed the show. Happy to see you. Next presenter. I know Malini is traveling right now. She can't join us now. Next presenter, please. Martin, welcome. Uh, Martin, can you open your camera? Yes, at the bottom of your screen, <laughs> press the video button. Right, next presenter then. We're having some uh, technological issues. We have some technical issues. But welcome. Hi. Thank you for inviting me. I really enjoyed this series of lecturers. It was so interesting. Thank you so much. Please keep going. Deaf People United. I'm so happy. Thank you for this initiative. Wait a second. Maybe this is the first time people have to deal with this technology. Can be a bit confusing sometimes. My tech team. Can we switch to Mexico, please? Hello, dear tech team. I see. Next presenter, please. Thank you, Mexico. Mexico. On to the next. 
Lisa Ferdinand here asking, can you see, are you in gallery view? Can you pin? It did switched because I didn't realize. Yeah, I think it's all the deaf interpreters introducing themselves now. I'll switch to gallery view. Uh, Lisa, why don't I stay with Dami and yeah. you try to, from gallery view, try to pin one after the other? I will stay in gallery view. Okay, and I'll do Dami. Mm. Okay, move to the next. Bruno from South Africa, floor is yours. Hello. Thank you, Dami. Dami, thank you so much for inviting me to present. And really just, wow, Miha's presentation was fantastic. I must say, viva Slovenia. Miha, you were amazing. And go deaf interpreters and go deaf world. And all the different deaf interpreters love you all merry christmas from south africa love to you all thank you thank you next jeff jeff hello Hello all. I just want to say this has been such fantastic work, Dami. My hat off to you. I'm so impressed. This is the last one with Miha. I was just floored, really impressive. Just like all of the other presenters, so happy that I could be involved. And thanks to the tech team and thanks to showing, yes, Death We Can and presenting all this in our visual language, giving us a drink for our eyes. And thanks to the deaf interpreters. That's all I want to say. Just thank you so much. And I hope that we can continue this. But uh, maybe uh, we can have some children as presenters. Let's give them the floor. Let's make sure we give some youth that are 10 or 15, maybe 10, 10, 15 minutes, maybe they can show our story. It would be great to bring the youth uh, and give them a platform. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, can all the interpreters turn off their cameras? No, 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 sorry. I misunderstood my tech team. Can all presenters now turn off their cameras? This is a request from the tech team. All presenters, please turn off your camera. Bruno, you as well. Please, presenters, turn off your cameras. Jeff, please. All right, we have a better quality now. And we move to Argentina, to Argentina.
Argentina. Let's see who pops up. We have a participants list of 60. So it takes some scrolling. <laughs> this is the first time many of us are dealing with this technology. We're learning as we go. Okay, we can't find Argentina. Let's move to the next. Again, tech team, look for the next presenter. The next one is from Bolivia. Or not. Next. Czech Republic, welcome. Hi. First, I want to thank Dami for all the work he has done and organizing this all. Thank you so much. Thanks to all the interpreters working so hard. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to present. Oh my goodness, there's so many interpreters here. <laughs> thank you, thank you all. Thank you. Next. From Albania. Hopefully you're here. I don't see you, too bad. Next, please. Somebody who's live, who lived in France is was traveling to Mexico to give some visual vernacular, some VV trainings. Possibly you're traveling. Next one from Canada. Gary, Gary's here. I know you're here. We're looking for you. We're having some, we're having some technical issues. Gary. Ah, there you are. Gary, hi. Gary. Hello, hello, hello. Wow, what an inspiring, amazing. <laughs> oh, so inspired. Thank you, Damie. This is so important, seeing all these people throughout the whole world, all these deaf people that deaf people can. Miha's story was so inspiring, showing the whole world that deaf people can. We can be in parliament. We can be everywhere, all over the world. And one day we're going to have a deaf parliamentary member in the UN. Yes, we can. Dami, thank you. I think, Dami, you need to go to the UN and yell out loud saying, we want in. Go for it. Very, very, very happy. And Thank you, Gary. You all. And not just me, all of us, deaf presenters, deaf interpreters, we're we all united. We should all go. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Uh, next presenter, please. Hassan from Turkey. Hassan. And Jakob. Hello, Damie. Thank you. Sorry, I'm using my telephone. My laptop broke. Now I can see you. 
Thank you so much, Demi, for organizing this all, for presenting us, for presenting this all on Zoom. Thank you so much for making this happen. I hope that we can ignore, organize this again. It was so great to see Miha's presentation. And yes, I remember meeting him many times when he was here in, in, in uh, Turkey. It was so wonderful. And it was so great to see that back in his story. The last time I saw him, oh, and we have, and we hope that he comes back. And it's so great to be able to see him again. I remember those times a long time ago meeting up with him. He's always welcome. Thank you, Jakub. Thank you. Thank you to the interpreters as well. Thank you to all the presenters. Hassan, you're next. Where are you? <laughs> Hello, everyone. As we know, Corona has taken over the world and there's many people that are stuck at home, but we have technology. We have these amazing presenters and thank you to Slovenia and the deaf community there for putting this on. It's important that we keep the information flowing, that we share this information, that we are inspired by our deaf brothers and sisters. Thank you. Big love to you all. Thank you, Hassan. Our next presenter apologized. Um, is unable to attend. Next one, Mexico. Mexico. No, it's here. Is Arunas here? Chris and I want to say thanks to the Slovenian deaf community for this great idea for putting on this webinar. In these times, these challenging times in Corona, it's so great that you brought all these deaf presenters together. So us from WASLI, we're very happy to support this and are very thankful to the deaf interpreters for volunteering their time and get, getting this experience. Chris and I hope that the Interpreting actually means that we can do this with hearing and deaf interpreters that I hope that we see that we can have more bilingual work happening and more bilingual interpreting. I hope this has been a positive experience for you all. And thanks again to the deaf interpreters who volunteered their time through all these webcasts. Thank you so much. And don't stop. Let's keep this going. Thank you so much. You and I, our friendship goes back a long way on a personal level and the deaf sports. We've met so many times. I love your family. Our families have met. Thank you. On to the next presenter, please. Germany. Unfortunately, not available. Next. Ruva from Holland. Ruva, R-U-V-A. Ruva. Hello. Thank you, Dami. I, I have no words. I know that uh, we ended this series with Miha and before that was from Australia and I was then before that. I have to say, it's been so impressive to see this grow and see the worldwide reach that this has. I'm very impressed with the Slovenia Deaf Association, with what you put together and all the interpreters. 
this is amazing. You've put this all together. There's nothing like this in the world. So I'm very, very inspired. Beautiful work. Keep on going. Let's make sure that we can keep this going through Zoom to so this great platform. Thank you, Dami. We wish you luck and fabulous. Thank you to everyone. And to the, all the deaf interpreters, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you for your kind words, Aruga. Our next presenter is from Australia. Hello. Hello. I just want to say thank you to Dami and to Dami doing the technical work. What an amazing team. And also to everyone backstage and to all the interpreters and to all the viewers. Thank you all. Merry Christmas. And I hope to see you in the future. Bye-bye. Thank you. It's been 15 years since we last met. We have to meet again. I'm looking forward. And our next presenter you've seen tonight is from Slovenia. I just have one word. Wow. And I have so much respect for Dami for organizing all this, for arranging all the presenters also to the interpreters for working tirelessly. I've been seeing you interpret all the different presenters and thank you to all the other presenters for sharing your stories, for having us be able to put your experiences in our minds and in our hearts. Dami? I would be more than happy to uh, support again. Thank you, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you. That was the last presenter. Now I want to ask the interpreter team to step forward. Let's start with South Africa. I am sorry, uh, there's a time, this is the moment for the interpreters, deaf interpreters to switch. South Africa, the South African team. You're welcome. Oh, South Africa. Oh, now I see. Well, we felt like we are now part of this whole world. In South Africa, we're so far away, but now we feel that we're part of you and we don't, don't want to stop. We'll continue working. Thank you so much. Okay, move on to the next country, Hungary. I also want to say thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Even during these Corona times, making sure that we don't stay bored and losing our minds that you've given us some brain work. I was asked to do this for the first time. And it was so exciting that I kept on joining month and month after month. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for this opportunity for letting me experience this. Thank you very much and uh, respect. Thank you, Hungary. Albania. Where is Albania? Oh, there he is. For the first, the first time, uh, due to Corona, this technology has emerged that we've had so much global contact. So thank you, Dami, for, for asking me 
to interpret these presentations. I've been very happy to be involved in this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Albania. To the next country team, Russia. Yes, Team Russia here. Hi. We just want to say thank you so much to Dami and Dami and to all the other deaf interpreters for working so hard from week to week for eight months. And our team in Russia were about six or seven of us and uh, so happy to have been able to work on this. Merry Christmas to you all and uh, have a good time. Thank you, Spasiba Russia and your team. Spain. Dami first, I really wanna thank you. I've been the only one. I didn't have a team, but I've just been so fascinated. Uh, and I thought I can do one or two hours, but I've learned so much. I've asked other people to help me, but unfortunately I haven't found anyone else, but I've enjoyed it so much. I've been amazed to see all these other deaf interpreters and seeing all these other sign languages, all these other pre presenters, very impressive. Thank you to you, Dami and to the technical team. The only left thing left to say is Merry Christmas and love to you all. Muchas gracias, thank you. To the next team, please. Lithuania. <laughs> Hello again. Now I'm switching. Uh, as an interpreter, says Arunas, my team as a team of five, and thank you, Dami, for inviting us um, and giving us the opportunity that Lithuania could be part of this. You've given us such a great experience also to be able to develop ourselves, and also thanks to the technical team, the Lithuanian interpreters. Also, I thank uh, we've been able to uh, arrange this officially. We've been able to be paid. So I really thank the coordinator of the interpreting here that we've been able to be doing this paid. If it wasn't uh, for our boss to, and the Deaf Association to support this, I don't know if we would have been able to be here. So I'm really happy that the five of us have really become a close knit team. And uh, we hope to develop this further and also see what our own qualities are to see how we can work as deaf interpreters and also to experience the translating process. We hope to be a part of this in the future. Thank you, Lithuania and your team. And thank also the, your supporters. And you and I, uh, we go back a long way. I want to thank you for your help in finding more interpreters from other countries. Thank you. Next country, Mexico. I know that it's in the evening there and here is daytime, but uh, it was no problem. <laughs> We work together with Asia, with Europe. It's so wonderful to be part of the global community. I've been working alone, but I'm not tired. I've learned so much and I wanted to show the Mexican community and South America, Central America, that we can do this work. And I look forward to involving more people. <clears throat> Thank you, Dami and Dami for organizing this all. Uh, this has been amazing the last years. Uh, technically, we've learned, of course, you've learned so much. Thanks to all the other interpreters, and I love you all. Great job. And Merry Christmas. Love you too. Thank you, the Mexican team. On to the next. 
Turkey. Thank you. This is the first time that I've been involved in, as a deaf interpreter like this, and it's been such an amazing experience to see all these different interpreters on Zoom. Thank you so much. I've learned so much from the presenters, thanks to Dami and Dami. Uh, we hope that this continues and that we can still work together. Thank you so much. Thank you, Turkey. Brazil. Ferdinand, can we switch? So that you do uh... I have to go to the bathroom one sec. Okay. <laughs> Brazil saying. It's been so great to be involved and I've been so inspired. Thank you so much to Dami and to the other interpreters and to Slovenia, the deaf community. And let's keep this going. This has given me so much energy. We also need to make sure that we see that internationally we can be connected. So thank you so much. And maybe we can set up a new conference or something new for the future. This would be great to keep this going. Slovakia. Here I am. Thank you so much for giving this, giving me this experience. This is the first time to be interpreting. I know international sign was the first time to interpret from international sign to Slovakian sign. It's given me such a great experience. Merry Christmas to you all. And thank you, Slovenia. Next, check. Our Czech team says, thank you for giving us this opportunity. This has been such a great experience. And thank you to organizing all these presenters and the technical work behind it. That's a lot of work. Thank you so much. And let's think on how we can continue this, that we can have a global reach. Thank you so much. Hello. Yes, there's three of us, one from Canada and two from the United States. Unfortunately, they weren't able to come today. Uh, one has a seven-year-old, has her birthday today, and the other one is flying. <laughs> but uh, thank you for Dami and Dami and the technical team for supporting this all providing all this through Zoom. I think that the deaf community uh, didn't know that we had all this talent, that all these deaf people have such stories to share, that we've been so inspired, and that all these deaf interpreters, oh, it makes me so happy to see all these deaf interpreters. Merry Christmas to everyone, and looking forward to 2021. Argentina. You on? Uh, Juan had to go to his next job. Okay. Next team, please. Germany. Hello, Germany. Thank you, Dami, for organizing all this. I'm not an official interpreter, but for me, this has been a real new experience. 
I've been looking for certified deaf interpreters and also trainee deaf interpreters who need to practice. So thank you for this opportunity to practice interpreting from international sign languages, both certified deaf interpreters. Thank you for giving new interpreters uh, an opportunity to volunteer and see if this is a possible career future for them. I'm a bit sad that this is our last episode for this season, but thank you, Dami, so much for creating this season. It's absolutely at the right time. The technology now is there. Thanks also for this opportunity to see deaf interpreters from other countries. We've made some personal connections also outside of this series. Thank you so, so much. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. <laughs> I don't see Greece. Thank you, Dami. Thank you to all the interpreters and to all the deaf interpreters doing this work on Zoom. It's really important. Thank you to all the presenters. And I hope that this continues. Have a good Christmas and a happy new year. You have to have it on gallery view. I know, but even then I have three uh, screens to scroll to. Oh. <laughs> Who's next? Has he said yet? <clears throat> you know. Thanks. Pin me, pin me. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank the Slovenian Cultural Association for approaching me. We're here, we're six people. <clears throat> and I'll introduce them by their sign names. So we're six deaf interpreters here in France. And we've reached the top of the mountain. We planted our flags. It's been a difficult journey but we made it to the top. We planted our flags. And Dami, unfortunately, we couldn't meet in person this year. But I'm so grateful for this uh, opportunity to work through Zoom with so many deaf interpreters from so many different countries, to see all your different sign languages, to see the presenters and all their stories. Some were surprising, some were very educational, but thanks everybody for sharing their stories. Merry Christmas first, and then I wish you a very happy new year. Love you all. Italy. Ooh, got a review. No, no, Italy, Slovenia. Okay. Slovenia. Yes. Blue Hello. To all deaf interpreters, Damian and the organizers, thank you for inviting us. Thank you for this learning opportunity to work with so many 
different presenters and colleagues from all around the world on deaf culture, deaf personalities. Myself, I'm not a certified interpreter. This is my opportunity to interpret from international sign to Slovenian sign language. Thank you for sharing your stories. Thank you for this training opportunity. I wish you a very Merry Christmas and I'm looking forward to see you again in 2021 and work with all you deaf interpreters from all over the world. Thank you. Back to Dami. Unable to start our video. <laughs> Just want to say thank you. It's been so beautiful. I first started to uh, voice for Rufa. And I saw all these interpreters and I thought they were all these hearing interpreters going to be using my English and I was shocked. I was just the only one in the hearing interpreter. And now there's two of us working together with my colleague, Lisa. But it's been so beautiful to see so many friends, so many new and old faces. But you've really inspired me. I hope that this will continue in the new year. And hopefully to see you next year. Have a Merry Christmas. Now we have our Slovenian spoken language interpreter who translated into spoken Slovenian. I am not sure if you're around and if you can open your mics or cameras. I guess they cannot find me, but ah, okay. Hey, hey. hey. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you to the Slovenian spoken language interpreters. You may open your camera if you wish. Slovakia. Waiting. Hello. Maybe we can ask the technical team to help. Dawn. Hello. Now, I'm a bit nervous, Dami is saying. Uh, Russia, can you turn off your camera, please? No, anyway, just don't pin her. So, Don, as you know, today is a big day. Russia, can you turn off your camera, please? Yeah, technical issues. It's normal these days. They happen. So, today is a big day. Because you've been working on this for a whole year. Just a moment. Uh, tech team. Tech team is asking for 
us to hold the seconds. The Facebook and YouTube viewers have some technical issues, so... We need to go to gallery view. Mm -hmm. mm. I will pin Don, and if you pin... Perfect. Dami? I will. I'll interpret for Don. Can you all see me? I was having some issues with the subtitles. Technical timeout. I think we've rearranged the screen for Facebook. Let's continue. All right, rewind. So today is a very big day for Dami and the Dev Association and everyone working on this project because you have been working on this for a full year. And today is the very last day. But I wanted to let you know, not only I, Don, but many, many viewers and everyone involved, we want to thank you for this extremely difficult job. This, at the start, was really just a small idea, but you're the one that put the head the first flame and now I see it become a roaring fire. And I, I look at the first presentation and the first event till today, what a difference. And ending off with Miha's presentation was so inspiring. It was a beautiful way to end this whole event. I'd like to now ask you, <laughs> you're saying you're a bit nervous, but we're coming to the end. This is the final. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll see if I can take some inspiration from Miha's assertivity. Now that it's the last episode, how do you feel? Wow. Maybe the last episode. Maybe not. Have time for family life. This is not the first time I am saying goodbye. This is part of the deaf global experience, isn't it? So life will continue. Life goes on. We want to take this opportunity to ask you some questions. Maybe other people don't know, but how did you come up with this idea? How did it even start? Mm -hmm. Two years ago, Zoom was a business application. Now, after the Corona crisis hit, people were forced to stay home and so many deaf people were isolated with great needs to communicate with others. I'm in Russia now and Russia went in lockdown after Slovenia. Met some deaf people I met my wife, I met a third person, I met you, Dawn, and we came up with this idea. We started building our network. We got some friends, interpreters from Mexico that helped and stepped in. 
and we decided that we would set up this series until the end of December. My, I was so busy on my phone that I had to recharge my phone three times a day, trying to connect to all people, trying to pull this team together. And people in Slovenia know me. I never give up. So by May, June, we had it together and we had an increasing number of viewers. By September, some volunteer interpreters started to pull out. Uh, the Corona crisis was in between the first and second wave. So I had to approach people again and ask them if they would continue volunteering. By September, I was to not want to give up and I'm so grateful to all the volunteer deaf interpreters and to my tech team we were in daily daily contacts and that's been very important throughout the process as well sorry I asked I, I lost on oh there she is I have another question. During Corona epidemic, it's been horrible. It's just been so difficult. But there's also been some positives that have come out of Corona. If Corona didn't happen, do you think this would have ever, this would have ever happened? Maybe not. You're right. So we have to be grateful in a way to the Corona crisis for enabling this Zoom technology to be developed and you know the deaf global community has its WFD events every four years and those people who can afford it are able to travel on a European level we have the European Union of the Deaf and again people who could afford to travel were part of these events but now thanks to zoom we really can invite any speaker from rich countries poor countries and i feel this is an opportunity to pull people up from the developing world without the money to travel to these global or regional deaf events and pull them in and give them access well that feeds into my next question beautifully because the corona epidemic was worldwide, we actually saw more and more deaf people lobbying for access, lobbying for access to the press conferences and now you see sign language interpreters more uh, in the limelight and deaf interpreters also on getting the podium. And technically, actually, the deaf are usually always ahead. But mm -hmm. why do we need such a crisis to show the world that deaf people can do this? Mm -hmm. This is a model for the world to see. That deaf interpreters, that deaf people can. And like you said, there's WFD, And the like, however, sometimes, yeah, there's some technical issues, but I want to ask you if you're just really open. Of course, there's been some great situations, maybe some uh, in the whole year. What was one thing that you thought needs to improve? If I think and compare the World Federation of the Deaf 
and EUD events that I've attended, they were typically events where lecturers passed on information and where we exchanged experiences about how to lobby and advocate our governments. We had to exchange experiences about how to lobby for better access to interpreter services, better education. And I think we need to advocate even more. We need to see more progress worldwide. So thanks to this Zoom technology, thanks to the Corona crisis, maybe we can put more pressure on our national deaf associations and put up the pressure, uh, help them put more pressure on the national governments. Yes. Uh, but I'm also curious about your personal experience uh, with this Zoom project. Uh -huh. What is a great experience out of this, but what is, if this would continue, what would be something that you'd want to improve? What needs to be improved? All right. Uh, I'm very grateful for the Zoom technology that they've upgraded their program. That was very positive. What can be improved is ways to make the sign language interpreter more visible on YouTube and Facebook Live events. I have been sending messages to Zoom, asking them to upgrade their program so that people could pick their interpreter. They could multi-pin. Zoom has improved. I think we have can make better use of the power of the internet. We should improve the bandwidth issues. Too many applications are still uh, based <laughs> on spoken language and we need to improve access to sign language and sign language interpretation on the internet. So the team in Slovenia, from what I've seen, your team has really learned a lot. Do you think as a team, you could come up with new standards for what the deaf community needs? Maybe that's a project idea. From what I've seen, you guys work on a very professional level. I've also seen many different live streams uh, through Zoom. And of course, many people have been using uh, the Zoom service, but it is still more hearing friendly. It's not deaf friendly yet, but we don't have another platform. So maybe we can create standards and suggestions as a, as a technical group. That's something you could take on after this, thanks to your ex ex uh, experience. Very good points. And I'm very grateful to the tech team for their cooperative way in which we've dealt with the Zoom issues. And I'm very grateful to all deaf interpreters. We have been exploring other platforms, but Zoom seems to be the best program at the moment. Not ideal, but the best so far. Oops. There is a woman here in Slovenia who wants to apply for a European project trying to establish a platform that really works for deaf people so we can really create a deaf-led project and a deaf-led app. Okay. I want to 
in application. I want to see software that enables multi sign language interpretation. I want the EU to support the deaf community to develop that. I hope so too. I'm wondering, why have you chosen to offer national sign languages? So interpreters international sign language. Can you explain more about the international sign process uh, and if the interpreters are paid or if it's volunteered? Mm -hmm. My association, we've had discussions in the board and we all work on a voluntary basis. None of us get paid. <laughs> all deaf interpreters have volunteered their time. We have not looked at interpreters being qualified or not, certified or not, but I've seen interpreters who are not certified grow throughout this season. In many countries, we've had interpreter teams. There have been negative and positive experiences, but we're very grateful for having been able to provide you this training experience. And again, I'm so grateful to all deaf interpreter teams. I'm so impressed at all the people volunteering, but that also brings us back to the deaf community that has been advocating for centuries. So it's really about working from your heart and now look where we are. If I see all of this happening on Zoom and all of the different languages, actual sign language, our language, it's great to be able to show this to the UN and say, look at, show them what's possible. So hopefully this will be a model if, and where countries also, uh, national countries and governments can see that we can also have a deaf led interpreting unit with all of our national sign languages. It's so important for our children to see this, to have this also with the support of our hearing colleagues and that there is a bridge. Miha was signing uh, today about being the bridge, being and having a bridge between the hearing and deaf community. And mm. I believe that as well. We need to work together with the deaf and the hearing communities together. Yes. Personally, I've been very, very motivated and it's been so inspiring to be in touch with all the presenters, all the interpreters. The only thing I feel bad about is the fact that it had to be on a voluntary basis, but I'm so grateful for my global network of friends. Well, you know, TED Talks, that was, uh, you know, there's different presenters. They're given you know, 15 minutes, eight minutes, a half an hour. And there's also a uh, deaf TEDx. And I've also seen uh, that they, so many great ideas, uh, really mind blowing ideas. I feel like this is actually a sort deaf TEDx. What's a little, what's different here is that we have different topics that we've covered. We've invited different guests. From what I've seen, and now I saw Miha and what he was sharing, as a deaf person, I work so hard, but then I see, wow, he did it, he made it. So then it really inspires me and gives me that energy to keep on fighting, keep on working harder. So. And I think I, this is like a library. I think it would be great to be able to share this with teachers, with 
politicians share this wealth of knowledge that we have, thanks to all these presenters that you have put together. This is really gold that we have. And we can show the hearing community and show them what we've been through. I think with all of these recorded talks, there's much more work to be done. We can use this to lobby all this work that you've done. I don't think it's for nothing. I think with all these recordings, we can also bring them to schools, to deaf schools, to hearing schools or mainstream schools. We can use this amazing data and these presentations that you put together for future use. I agree. Wow, all of us uh, must be really tired from looking at the screen and our deaf interpreters have been working for a long shift. So a shift in the time for the deaf interpreter teams to switch. Dawn, we need a team of four, five people to put together a project proposal uh -huh. and to get money to keep this going. That's all I can think of. Um, I count on your support. I count on your help. I hope we can keep this going. I'm at your disposal. That's all I know what to say at the moment. And what's your next step now? Do you want to put this on again? No problem. I want to continue. <laughs> but if deaf interpreters are not willing to continue on a voluntary basis, then it might be the end of it. Give us a little time. Maybe you can continue on a voluntary basis one or two months more mm -hmm. while we put together a project proposal. Perhaps by May next year, we will have a positive reply and we can continue this with funding. It really depends on the will of the deaf interpreters to continue working on a voluntary basis. Well, just once again, congratulations to you and to Slovenia and the deaf community. You have shown us what is possible. You really shook the stuff up. Uh, when you invited me <laughs> to present, I actually took a picture of all these interpreters. I was shocked. I had idea that I was being interpreted into all these national sign languages. You made it happen. And you also organized it all. You had yeah, just really amazing. Uh, I applaud you. Thank you so much. I hope, I really sincerely hope that you take this on and make more of a project of it. Uh, you have gotten uh, You've gotten all of our attention. I'm sure there's an EU project opportunity here. I'm sure there are many opportunities. There's a lot of potential here, that's for sure. And uh, this is just the beginning. I think we can raise the bar and uh, take it to the next level. Thanks again. Thank you, Dawn. All right. <laughs> I, uh, happy holidays. I uh, hope everyone stays safe. And, and now you can rest and spend some time with your family and uh, your family can have you back, Damien, Dami. <laughs> Thank you, Dawn. I think it's doable, whether it's an EU level project or a global yeah. level project, we can put it together, we'll do it. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you so much. Love you. Bye-bye. Dawn, you can turn off your camera now. Our next guest, I want to uh, <clears throat> spotlight two more people that have been working behind the scenes as part of our tech team.
behind the scenes there have been many people who have been taking notes in Slovenian, have been transcribing all the presentations. So thank you so much. We also have had a hearing woman uh, whose first name starts with N uh, for transcribing all the previous uh, presentations. Thank you also the rest of the tech team. If you want, you can take the floor and present yourself a little bit. Thank you so much. You want to say a few words? Go ahead. Yes, it's been an impressive job doing the technical part. At first, we started with a few interpreters, and now there's so many interpreters. I'll be honest, I'm very tired, but uh, I think there can be some technical uh, changes. I hope that there'll be some other technical uh, improvements, uh, but it's been great to work on this. Thank you to all the interpreters uh, for making this even better. Thank you all. Thank you so much for your support. So the Slovenian Deaf Association has had, has been supporting me for the past two years. I want to thank all of you for your support. Now the last two months, we've had a new board elected, a new president, a new board, and I'm looking forward to working with you yeah. in the future. Um, I want to thank you. Um, now, my dear family members, thank you. We've been not seeing each other very much. And just give me one second. Yes, here you are. <laughs> Come, jump into my arms. You can tell the audience, I love you. I love you. <laughs> and the third one, give him a big, I love you. <laughs> My family's incredible i want to thank them for their patience while i was on my mobile phone zooming around the world texting around the world thank you to my audience thank you my family merry christmas and a happy 2021 Finally, I want to thank all the presenters. I want to thank Dawn from H3. And I wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas and a Corona free 2021. May this epidemic come to an end. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I love you. Ciao. You may turn off your cameras now. No, stop. you can stop the recording. <laughs>